how's it going everyone welcome to the week one weekly roundup the week one roundup for the elite battle league this week we saw all the first matches go down and my goodness timmy and i touched on it we, we talked about it a little bit before we, we started recording here there's a little bit of everything in this week there's quite a bit going on but uh i am of course your host lonely hermit i am joined by my wonderful co-host it's really timmy b uh how you doing good sir how's everything going dude i am doing great we had a great week one and uh yeah a little bit of everything and uh we'll just hop into it because i don't want to spoil anything for our amazing roundup and recap and you know what i'm excited for week two already like i want to see these battles now <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um and of course as per usual we're joined by belly uh she's always right here behind me um uh there is something before we get into the matches there is something um i want to acknowledge actually i guess i should say check out all the coaches in the description my links timmy's links are going to be down below but all the coaches are also going to be down below be sure to check them out and go watch these matches in full the weekly roundups do not replace the matches you guys absolutely still need to go watch them um even if it's just one side although it'd be greatly appreciated if you guys could watch both sides um but you guys should definitely go check out the matches this this does not replace them you should definitely go check them out and by by and the way you can do that is by checking out all the links down below uh but there is something i do want to acknowledge uh, because it happened in a couple of matches so i want to acknowledge it now um so that way it, i can just i don't have to acknowledge it in any other match um if a pokemon dies by its own recoil no kill is rewarded so let's say a pokemon uses a takedown um and it dies to its own recoil no kill is awarded to anyone it is simply dead um the opponent does not get the kill or anything like that it's dead it's done um there's no kill awarded there however if a pokemon dies to poison let's just say whoever poisoned that pokemon is awarded the kill even if that pokemon is already dead um hopefully that makes sense to you guys but that's why the score lines might be a little bit weird you might be like wait but five pokemon died in that match how come he only has four it's because if a pokemon dies by recoil they do not get awarded the kill now again <laughs> this week we're going to be going through the um the matches in the order that they are in our discord in the schedule um and starting off with uh one that that hurt a lot <laughs> we have the la inferno versus the everglade entes uh it was quite the match um i will say i got off to an awful start um and honestly yeah, it, I keep I kept saying and I still stand by it that if I had Gigantamax Corvette to get rid of the toxic spikes um, Could have been a different match so much so that yes glare and wheezing could have came in and just put up the toxic spikes again However, uh, the thing is is I could have stalled those extra couple minutes where towards the end I had two Pokemon die to the point that this match was so close realistically that it genuinely could have been a one kill match um, and I was talking, I was editing and watching it back and I messaged Foos, I was like, dude, no one died until 16 minutes into this match. I was like, oh my goodness, it was just such a, an intense match. Uh, of course, Foos is, is obviously an incredible battler, so that was never going to be easy. Um, and honestly, it was a huge switch fest, definitely, and uh, it was just me trying to, trying to, it was, it was basically just damage control um from the beginning on from about five minutes on it was just damage control even more so towards the end when i legit just started stalling for time because i needed i needed to limit it as much as possible um but yeah definitely made a couple misplays that's gonna come with you know being rusty with competitive and all that good stuff um so yeah what, what are your thoughts on this match yeah you you said it right there my friend no deaths until 15 16 minutes in that was my initial thought as well was just switch 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 <laughs> and uh I, we, as we established uh in our previous video in our preseason preview uh i said that i am an aggressive pokemon as well as an aggressive pokemon trainer so i was kind of sitting in my seat being like somebody attack somebody like good luck <laughs> like it was just toxic spikes and stealth rocks and switching and switching i was like somebody do something uh and then finally it it, it happened and Foos had a great strategy, and, and watching yeah. his video, he was saying, oh, I want to do this, like, I, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. He came prepared, and even, like, from the beginning, he was like, if this happens, I'm doing this. So he had yeah. every single move planned out, and he even said in his video, he was like, we were just playing chess. We were just moving around and mm -hmm. waiting for that one mistake or, or maybe that one non-switch to, to really 
uh, pack a powerful punch and and he he saved his dynamax to the end and it ended up paying off for him. <laughs> yeah yeah i think another mistake i definitely made and it was a last minute decision was bringing dracovish um i should have never brought it i really shouldn't have uh but again like i kid you not 10 minutes before we got into a call to start the match i decided to put on the team and honestly i shouldn't have because i knew he was going to try and build around it and i should have just left it at home should just let it rest but i i don't know something i don't know i just I don't know what came over to me just put on the team i should just gone with my gut i was starting to doubt my team decision i definitely should have left it though because i knew foos was gonna have a plan for it um and ultimately it really didn't make any difference for it whatsoever and i should have just left it at home could have brought like mammoth swine maybe that would have made a bigger difference uh not really sure uh, but definitely should have left jacobish at home but it's a, it's a little bit of a stinger but i believe if I, if i'm remembering correctly that is the lowest scoring elite battle match uh, elite battle league match period like across both seasons i think that is the lowest scoring match out there but uh big ggs to Foose. he played really really well like you said he had his game plan and he executed for sure um now moving on from that because i'm gonna start crying if we stay on it long enough um we have the kentucky kinglers versus the new brunswick nine tails the cage lock rematch um and of course course came down to the wire this was actually the second match in a row didn't mention the first match did go to timer this one also went to timer um, which kind of hit me out of nowhere because i felt like there was so much action going on that when it said hey there's there's like a minute left and it started counting down i was like wait what like whoa that was so fast like it just it just sped up so quickly um but this was a pretty back and forth match cinderace uh we've been talking about it a lot it's it picked up a, a kill um, but it, it also I mean, that's all really all it did is it picked up AKO came in to finish uh, Shoot came in to finish Snorlax. I believe is what it finished mm -hmm. off um, Yeah, so Cinderace didn't make too much of a difference Mimikyu I think the biggest surprise was that Mimikyu got one shot by the Snorlax Ooh. got absolutely bodied uh, But Diaga did really really well picking up three kills and it did eventually go down But those three kills were massive and I think something else I want to point out was the fact that it got confused and I believe it broke through confusion like four times in a row, which is amazing RNG for Derek. Never hit itself once, and it just kept breaking through the confusion and kept picking up these kills that were just changing the momentum and ultimately made a big difference because this match was only separated by one kill. It was 5-4. So this is definitely an intense match. And this is also the second match in a row where we saw Toxic Spikes. I don't think they got used, but they were, you know, on, on a move set. Um, but this was the second match where Toxic Spikes made an appearance. But it was a very intense, very close match. And again, the second one that went to timer. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on this match, Timmy? Yeah, it, it all comes down to that uh, Dialga from Derek, excuse me, from our friend Always More Videos. Breaking through those confusions every single time was so critical. Earlier in the match, Cinderace missed a high jump kick. So immediately yes, just yeah. half damage right there by itself. Oh, so that was huge that Dialga got off a couple of hits. Very interesting mm. to see what would have happened because uh, it would have come down to Zekrom for Salamance had the timer not <laughs> run out, and it, it would have been interesting mm -hmm. to see who was going to do, uh, who was going to outspeed the other. Obviously, both being Dragon type, both being super effective. Uh, this was a good win for the Kentucky Kinglers. Very impressed on Jack's side uh, as well, and uh, always mm -hmm. more videos. Derek's team does win my award this week for. Pokemon name of the week. It goes to his Ferrothorn, aka Game of Thorns. <laughs> Game of Thorns. Uh, definitely my favorite. <laughs> and for those of you also in the Elite Battle League, just because uh, you, I, there were a lot of great names out there. I'll just say there were a lot of great mm -hmm. names. So even if you used a Pokemon this week, it could still win next week. I, I, I kind of wrote down a list of a couple of names, but we have to start off strong with Game of Thorns from Derek. But it's going to be interesting, a win that he needed to have. And then uh, we'll see how the other, how both of these teams do throughout the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Honestly, neither really surprised me to, to make it to the finals or make a championship run, but that could mm -hmm. all change. And, and that's why we battle. Yeah, exactly. This, this definitely was a nice warm up match for both of them. Um, and like you said, they both did incredibly well. But speaking on nicknames, I'm very sad that he didn't name the Dialga Timmy B. I know, um, I know. As I a know. real throwback to the three verses. But, you know, it's okay. He's there in spirit, I guess. There will be Timmy um, B's in the future. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> of course of course uh but this yeah this match was very close and both of you guys performed incredibly well 
um and again that timer really came out of nowhere when i was watching it i was just like whoa three minutes left two minutes left one minute and now it's counting down i was like wow and derek it even really said intense. it as well in his video he was kind of like all right come on jack make a decision we got like two minutes left yeah. like <laughs> yeah. and, and honestly like that that final shot was it and, and so i i would i would like a no timer but you know just given the circumstances yeah. uh we do have a time limit yeah i would have wagered though if there was no time limit that zekrom might have been able to finish off yeah um, I, the last couple i don't know i mean they both said that they traded up for speed Derek was saying in showdown practices that salamance was out speeding it i think zekrom might have ended up winning because i think zekrom could take a hit or two uh and deliver mm. more of a powerful punch but hey i guess we'll that that's just you know uh pandora's box or schrodinger's box whatever it is <laughs> yeah. we don't know until we we open up the box <laughs> yeah uh one last note before we move on zekrom was your mega division mvp week one which i believe i might be remembering this incorrectly but i believe that is the first mvp from a losing team um which is crazy because normally it's, it's it's a pokemon that just ends up sweeping at the end um yeah and so, that's very disappointing on the winners in the mega yeah. division that you couldn't have the mvp you you let a loser win mvp come on now let's <laughs> let's see some dominant performances from our winners and timmy b calling everyone in the mega division <laughs> now including me <laughs> um so to move on to move on to the next matchup we have the closest probably the closest match of the week uh we had the iowa Civil war versus the atlanta braviary uh landon managed to walk away in his debut with a win a 6-4 win um like i mentioned with the recoil death it would have been 6-5 if recoils count however recoils don't so it's a 6-4 win um and it wasn't this is a really back and forth match honestly it was really back and forth they were trading kills left and right um tapu lele was the only one that managed to rack up more than a kill so i was very impressed that every pokemon on, on both sides was just doing work like everyone was doing work everyone was really getting a lot done um and again it was just so back and forth back and forth they were just trading blows left and right it was it's definitely like one of those boxing matches where they just they're just going at it they're just going at it all the way to round 11 and they're just going at it all the way to the end and it eventually came down to alolan raichu getting a side shock off on nido king to win the match uh, i never saw nido king outspeeding alolan raichu so when it came down to that i figured alolan raichu would be able to, to finish it off but that was a very very close matchup um and it was again just incredibly intense one of the closer matches in the elite battle league um definitely one of the closer ones i'm trying to think of other ones but i'm, I'm i have, have horrible memory uh, <laughs> uh but it was a very very close match and ggs to both of them i will say uh matt gave like uh, matt gave landon his team landon told me this like two weeks before yeah. they did their match same <laughs> um yeah matt gave landon his team which i guess kind of proved to be his downfall like i don't know if he, it was a confidence thing or if it was just uh being nice or something like that um maybe he came back to bite him uh obviously because landon was able to walk away with the win here uh, but what were your thoughts on this on this close matchup here yeah no it was it was definitely a close match for sure definitely the closest uh Full time, we'll say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> match, and I think that's kind of what it came down to. And not to discredit uh, Landon and the Iowa Center War, but he had a couple of weeks to prepare for this, so he knew exactly what moves to make, and it worked out that it came down to a Lowland Raichu versus Nido King. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, they're both super effective against each other. Raichu is uh, Raichu is a fast Pokemon, so Shy Shy. Oh my god, I can't speak right now. Shy Shy <laughs> easily takes down the Nido King for the win. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to see if. Matty Ice, if the, um, oh, what's his teammate? The Atlanta Braviary, excuse me. It would be interesting to see if he didn't tell his team and it went in as a surprise. Uh, I think he might have been able to pull out the victory there, uh, but this was a well even match and uh, mm -hmm. we got a good matchup this week for both teams as well so uh credit to landon mm -hmm. we both picked him we both we both kind of knew the secret yeah. we knew he knew the team <laughs> and uh he was excited for his tapu lele with thunderbolt a move that generally people wouldn't expect a tapu lele to have uh so he is definitely excited for his first win and uh, the atlanta braviary they're gonna bounce back i mean they made a great run last year and it's only week yeah. one you can lose a game or two or i'm sorry a match or two with the battles and still make a championship run so so, a great match from from two excellent and amazing people and uh hopefully we do get a rematch in the well mm -hmm. i guess it would be the championship since they're opposite division but hey 
there's only this is just season two so i definitely cannot wait for the rematch whenever it is yeah definitely and uh to be fair i, I believe uh at nine i did get off to a one and two start last season and then they did end up in the championship so it's definitely uh possible couple notes from this match uh i don't think matt was expecting freeze dry mm -hmm. that was really um although vanilla i mean you kind of should have seen it coming maybe I, I don't know if he was just trying to let Zimro go down or whatever uh unfortunately i could only watch one perspective so that way we could do this in time <laughs> um so i wasn't really able to watch the other side yet um and another thing was excadrill not using a steel type move on top of lele um that was another big one that was uh interesting maybe just trying to build up a special defense i guess um and it kind of bit him a little bit uh it might have made a big difference maybe top of lily would got down a little bit sooner um so that was another interesting thing but again like timmy said like we've been saying close close a very intense match yeah, and one and, that definitely and, does deserve a rematch yeah, yeah. And, and also this was a uh, cross division matchup and certainly this game matters every battle matters but in terms of the land at braviary this was the match to kind of test some things out maybe try a different yeah. move here and there because now the rest of his schedule is just division 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 which are mm -hmm. the matches you need to win so uh yeah I, I like his kind of strategy of maybe not using a steel type move against happy to see if he maybe can put some damage take some damage do this do that so uh i think he'll be ready to play in week two definitely definitely uh and again very great match you guys very very good match uh ggs to both of you now moving on to our penultimate match from week one we have the detroit luxury versus the miami dragonites now these last two matches honestly were probably quote unquote the easiest i guess by scoreline um it was they were the quickest uh both of them went about 10 minutes something along those lines um and miami the reigning champs started off very strong walked away with a 6-2 victory uh it was very very impressive um rillaboom got off to a fantastic start killing uh both who was it rosarade and blaziken with acrobatics those that was huge that was huge mm -hmm. right off the rip picks up two kills did go down but it really didn't matter it did its job it did what it had to do um and then eventually zassian was able to come in and we talked about him last week and sure enough uh your dynamax division mvp zassian came in and racked up three kills uh did not die so it's it's off to a great start to the season um and it was just a very impressive win for miami i mean he was over predicting really well he, all his predictions seemed to just go his way uh he was he was just he was just picking apart uh the uh the detroit luxury is just picking them apart with just with his over predictions and making just every move it just felt like every move he made was the correct one it just felt like he never made a misplay everything was correct even when whimsicott went down i can't remember what that move is called but um, he did everything this what is it called memento memento there you go to uh essentially get rid of a lot with Zy a lot of what zygarde was trying to do and set up um and just lowered everything for it when it was about to die anyways um which by the way doesn't count as a kill either um so that was just it was just a very 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 impressive win from miami honestly um not the best start for detroit but uh they definitely can see now some of the weaknesses maybe in there um and i feel like he'll come back with some with a, with a better game plan um to be able to counter a lot of stuff but it was just not a good start rillaboom picking up two kills right away was not a good start um and from that point on i feel like miami was able to control the match uh what did you think about the rating champs first showing yeah and, and this one as expected and no offense to our friend max and the detroit lugs rays once rillaboom took out roserade and blazekin with acrobatics i could have turned off the video and said all right miami dragon knights are winning this one and then if if you didn't and you continue to watch and then you saw zashi and get off three sword stances mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you could have turned it off at that point as well but i watched the entire battle i wanted to see how it goes and a key play from whimsicott uh basically whittling down zygarde it used cotton guard uh then it mm -hmm. used uh, something else to lower the special attack and special defense then it used memento so it definitely whittled down the zygarde and this is what you expected from the defending champ, a guy who was very mm -hmm. good competitively with Pokemon. Even watching his side of the video, he was just like doing this, doing that. He was like, oh, yeah, he's going to he was predicting all the switches, all the moves. And he's not afraid to sacrifice a Pokemon like he did with Whimsicott yeah. in order to uh, deteriorate a, a strong Pokemon with Zygarde. So 
Uh, the Detroit Lugs race will bounce back for sure. I mean, it's always yeah. tough when you're going up against the defending champion. Uh, so, and we, we talked about this uh, last week. Lugs race have a great team. They're going to win a couple of battles, mm -hmm. and it's going to be fun to see. But yeah, once Rillaboom took out those two Pokemon with acrobatics, it, it was all over there. It was a it was a very very tough start for the Luxuries, um, but like you said, great team. I don't see them struggling as much, um, but it was a pretty straightforward match. Uh, unfortunately, it was very cut and dry from the beginning. You, like you said, you kind of felt the momentum heavily shift to Miami's favor with those first couple kills, uh, and they and they were able to close it out. So a very impressive win for the reigning champs. They get off to a one zero start, and uh, I'm very excited to see what else they got in store for the rest of the season but also i'm very excited to see how detroit will bounce back i'm i'm, I'm interested to see if it will make a lot of game plan changes or if we'll try to keep it the same uh now moving on to the final match for week one we have the philadelphia flygons versus the redwood meows this was a uh, uh, an interesting matchup that at first felt like it was going to be pretty back and forth it kind of felt like it was going to be like the iowa versus atlanta matchup um, but eventually the Redwood Meowth, I think honestly when Meowth came in um, was when the, the match kind of started to turn because the Meowth was able to get off quite a bit of chip damage. It didn't really do a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but really it, it, its purpose was to get chip and to just stall and just be annoying. I believe I, I, I should have honestly counted, but it felt like Flygon's like Wolf went through like 10 switches on the Meowth alone. Um, he just was kept, he kept switching, trying, trying to pick up those kills um but unfortunately there's really not much he could do he did do well to take out the buzz wool right away with xerneas and the misty terrain was was a smart play as well um to negate any status conditions that he might be worried about but ultimately i just feel like red um for, sorry forsaken aces team was just too good um towards the end because the type matchups more so were we talked about it last week how good the philadelphia flagons type matchups could be but at the same time if some of those counters go down then you lose those type matchups so it was definitely hard to watch towards the end especially when draco zolt came in and it one shot the blissey <laughs> which i think was amazing um so huge uh, ggs to ace this is what we were saying last week we needed to see your guys's matches first um because now we will we praise the meowth um <laughs> we will not we will not um discredit the meowth it's here we get it we get its purpose um, but it was a pre an impressive win, especially in the second half of the match, I would say more so um, for the Redwood Meowth. What did you think about this matchup here? Yeah, we found out the true power of Meowth with Fake Out, Protect, <laughs> Substitute, and Payday. And that, mm -hmm. that you, you nailed it. That's when the match turned uh, for the worse for our friends, the Philadelphia Flygons. And he, it got in his head. He was like, all right, he's going to substitute here. He's going to protect here. Let yeah. me do this. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. And myself, as the aggressive Pokemon and, and aggressive Pokemon trainers we have all established, that's when you just got to <laughs> get it out as soon as possible. I don't care yeah. if it keeps on substituting. I don't care if it keeps using Protect. Use all of your PP for one Pokemon and be like, we got to get this out of here. We can't be switching. We can't be doing that. Um, and, and it got to his head as well. And, and that's how the, end, the rest of the battle came. And uh, Blissey, Blissey was okay, uh, but yeah, getting out that Buzzful, it, this could have been a lot worse, but that Xerneas taking out the Buzzful early on, yeah. that was the key to, to keep this close. I mean, yes, it was a, a, a plus two, minus two situation, but that was the key because Redwood Meows could have been in first place if that ended up being a plus three or a plus four, mm -hmm. so taking out that Buzzful was absolutely huge, but at the end of the day, Meow. Somehow Meowth got in the head <laughs> and uh, I kept stalling <laughs> yeah. and being annoying and I uh, didn't know what to do. Like you said, about 9, 10, 11 switches and that's what it came down to and that's when it turned. And then once he did that, once he kind of saw the rest of the team, saw the rest of the movesets, it, just no chance. No no chance yeah. at all. So, yeah, that, and you said it. That's what we said. Even for every other team in, in, in this league, we just needed to see how everybody was battling first before we can actually maybe make some more accurate predictions. We'll say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we went three for five this week. So hey, not, that's, not horrible. That's not over horrible. 500, baby. That gets us yeah. to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Um, this was also the third match we saw Toxic Spikes uh, making an appearance. This was the second one that got used. I, I still don't think it got used in the, the Kinglers versus Ninetales match, but this was a match where we saw Toxic Spikes again. Um, so I guess maybe I got to put on some Pokemon. Um, <laughs> um, the other one, the other interesting play was uh, Ho-Oh um, killing Decidueye because I was very surprised that Wolf would let Decidueye die because it countered Mouth really well. 
um but i i was I, that that was probably the most surprising play um was that decidui stayed in on the ho -Oh and it and took that brave bird uh well it didn't really take that brave bird it came in and, it kind of came in and died a little bit um and yeah ho -Oh did die to its own recoil but it's uh it did its job it took out a huge counter to the meowth um celesteela also dying very quickly um those were tough losses magnazone eventually it, it came in and died it definitely did towards the end there uh against draco zolt but especially the second half of this match is when it, it got really rough um but ggs to ace man you did you impressed you impressed very much so in that matchup um i think i have the rankings here so let me give the rankings before we get into our predictions um for the mega division first place we have the everglade entes uh with a plus three ratio we have the kentucky kinglers in second plus one the iowa incineroar in third plus one i'm not sure what the tiebreaker is there um we have the new brunswick nine tails in fourth uh negative one and the l inferno in lost wood and uh, wait, 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 no, excuse me uh what, 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 who is what? the coach of the la inferno again I, it's not uh, some guy who just doesn't know how to battle i don't know <laughs> um the dynamax division we have the miami dragonites of course in first with a plus three ratio we have the redwood meows in second at plus two uh we have the atlanta braviary at minus one and the philadelphia flygons at minus two um and then the detroit luxury is in fifth at minus three um and yeah so we're gonna move in now to our predictions for week two now that we have a little bit of something something now that we have a little we could see a little bit uh we could take away from some, some of these matches uh, i think maybe we could be a little more accurate like to said maybe huge maybe uh but first up we have the Everglade entes versus the kentucky kinglers quite the powerhouse matchup right away uh we saw how well foos played week one we saw how well Derek played week one um so i'm very excited to see this one we have two one and oh teams go squaring off just right away um and i love that i love that we already have these two teams squaring off immediately uh this is awesome um they both have a little bit of an advantage now being able to see the first week's match maybe just take a little bit from that um the everglade entes i feel like as much as i hate to say it didn't really get to show off everything they wanted to do in that matchup um and, but the kentucky kinglers definitely put a lot on the table um however the kentucky kinglers did take a few losses in that match so i feel like that might help Derek a lot trying to see like okay well this pokemon can't really take this hit blah 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 blah, blah so on and so forth so this is gonna be a really intense matchup i'm honestly leaning more towards the entes right now um because i just think that foos is just a smart battler and i feel like as the season goes on he's just gonna get better and better as he is better able to utilize his team um the powerhouse i i don't think foos makes the same mistake of trying to just revolve around the cinderace um he has to think about it obviously but i don't think he revolves his entire game plan around it and who knows the king Lures might not even bring it so the entes definitely um won't be making the same mistakes and i'm very excited to see this one because last season we saw them go back to back um the kinglers won the first matchup the entes won the second matchup so this is a nice tiebreaker right here uh right now right off the rip so i'm super excited for this one i'm kind of leaning towards the entes though uh what are you what are you leaning towards on this matchup yeah i'm leaning with the entes and and that's going to be my pick for this i think just watching foos's battle against you i think he has the strategy he is a chess player. He knows every single move. He has a counter for every single decision made. And uh, I don't know if Derek plays chess. I think he might be more of a checkers player right now. And we all know the hit show, The Queen's Gambit. Well, I think this week we're going to have Foose's Gambit and the Everglade Entes uh -huh. are going to pull out the win. All right, then and I'm going to go 100% on that, too. You convinced me. The Entes are going to walk away <laughs> with that one. <laughs> I think it's going to be very close. Though. I think Derek picks up some kills. I don't think Derek goes in a match without ever getting less than, like, three, four kills. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I could definitely see that happening. But like you said, the Entes were quite bulky. I will say that as well. So the, the Great Wall is still up. Um, and so the Kinglers need to learn how to break that down. Uh, and again, this feels very much like Sword versus Shield. However... The Entes have more more firepower this time around, so eesh, it's going to be a very close matchup, but I'm going to side with the Entes as well. Uh, moving on to the New Brunswick, Ninetales versus the Iowa and Cinder, where the first matchup where we had a, I don't mean to be harsh when I say this, but a winner versus a loser. Um, a 1-0 team versus an 0-1 team. Um, however, the Ninetales, man, they, they came up big. They came up with a big performance uh, going against the Iowa and Cinder. We talked about it, how these two teams are very interesting and diverse and they are going to have some some very different strategies um 
it's gonna be close man it's gonna be close with this one i'm kind of leaning towards the nine tails i'm not gonna lie um i just feel like seeing some of what jack brought in his match um i think he could definitely try and some, try some different things to outplay the incineroar there were some plays with jack that i just was not expecting um then again there were some plays with maybe with landon some of it i was kind of i, I was honestly expecting not just because he told me but because i could have seen it coming like uh freeze drive vanilla x for example um and again i just i don't know i just feel like jack might have the leg up on this one um and i'm, I'm leaning more towards him right now um what do you think yeah, this this is a tough one to call. I mean, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Iowa Incineroar is our friend Landon. He didn't dominate the Atlanta Braviary, and, and likewise with the Nine Tails, is that they yeah. barely lost. So th these are two guys mm -hmm. coming off close, close matchups. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't see the Cragnall. We didn't see Jack's number no. one pick. No. Where yeah. is the Snowflake? And I, I think <laughs> even before the season, looking at the schedule, I'm like, all right, this would probably be Iowa and Cinema. I'm kind of with you. I'm leaning toward the Nine Tails. Part of me also is leaning toward the Iowa and Cinema. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I think my official pick, I am going to go with the New Brunswick Nine Tails. Jack is going to get his first win here in the EBL, uh, first career EBL, and his first of the season yep. as well. Uh, it's going to be another close match. Might be a, it might mm. be a time limit one as well, but I'm going with the nine tails to squeak it out. <laughs> uh, I don't see this one. I don't know if I see this one going to timer. I think that's the part where I might disagree, Ooh. but I think I am going to go with the nine tails as well. I could see them just going blow for blow, honestly, much like the last matchup for Iowa. Um, but like you said, those two matches were the closest of the week. So uh, it's, it's, I just, I would not be surprised. Like if, 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 if on Saturday, you tell me, hey, or if you told me right now, hey, Landon won the match, I would not be surprised, like, at all. Um, but I'm just, I, I'm going to side with the Nine Tails. It's like a 51-49 split for me. It's, like, right there. I could easily go with the Incineroar, but I'm going to go with the Nine Tails. Um, and, yeah, so moving on to the Ellie Inferno versus the Redwood Meowth. Um, a very good appearance from the Meowth, I will say. A very good match. Um, with more preparation, maybe the LA Inferno could do better this week. <laughs> um, uh, I I could definitely see this. Uh, I could kind of see this being a, a uh, not a blow, uh, a shootout, where uh, again another sort of back and forth where these two teams just firing all cylinders. Um, that mouth is going to be annoying. I could definitely say that. Um, whether it gets broad or not is a different question. Um, there's a lot going on with with Ace's team. Um, that would definitely need to keep an eye out for um, I don't know if I can pick for this one. I guess uh, I'm I'll just keep picking myself I just I have to have I have I to have confidence I in myself. Yeah. I have to have confidence in myself um, So I, I I guess I'll just pick myself again, um, but you can you can slander me go ahead be mean <laughs> yeah, this is, this is an interesting matchup. And the first thing that I generally look at will be the legendaries, the ultra beasts, you name it. You have some good counters for Ho-Oh and Buzzwall. And then the rest of the teams, it's kind of even. He has Serena, mm. which could take out most of your team, uh, needless to say. Uh, Meowth is going to be annoying if Meowth even comes. And that's also a fun thing while predicting this. We don't know what, mm. what Pokemon are going to come. Obviously, you could probably pick those one or two obvious choices. Uh, yeah. But you know what? Just I, I won't slander you, of course. Uh, but I'm gonna <laughs> go. I'm gonna go with the uh, Redwood Meowths to win this one. I think uh, we'll see some wall rain. I think we might see some uh, some beefs on that side, and uh, obviously some nice attackers. So I'm gonna go with the Redwood Meowths. I wouldn't be surprised if you win. Of course, you have some good counters. But uh, I mean, after seeing the way he battled, especially using that Meowth, I gotta go with the Meowths on this one. I just want to throw it out there that uh, I'm now looking for a new co-host. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's gonna be a fun matchup. Um, definitely need to prepare for that one. Moving on to the penultimate matchup for week two, we had the Detroit Luxuries versus the Philadelphia Flygons. Both teams unfortunately could not walk away with the win uh, in their first matchups, but nonetheless, I will say that um, they they. They definitely kind of got controlled in their matches, um, especially towards the latter half of their of both their matches. They just kind of got controlled. Um, Max, it, it's a big question of what happens if you don't get off to that start. If you don't, you know, right. lose two mons right off the rip, what happens? You know, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see Max's game plan for this uh, for this week against the Philadelphia Flygons. I'm 
Uh, it's a tough one. I think Max honestly has more experience and I feel like he's got probably the better team. They both have very balanced teams. I feel like I feel like the Luxuries have a better team to try and counter uh, the Flygon. So I think honestly, I'm going to go with the Luxuries for this one. Um, I feel like Max is able to rebound. He's able to look at his mistakes. Um, and again, it's it's just if Rillaboom doesn't get those two kills, what happens? The Zacian still come in and sweep. So I'm very curious to see this matchup, but I think I'm, I'm going to go with the Luxuries for this one. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one. I think I'm going to go with the Luxuries as well. I think our friend Max uh, has realized maybe you don't start with <laughs> Roserade. And yes, we do know with Toxic Spikes or potential setup moves, absolutely a solid choice. But he can't go down... 2 in two moves like he did last week so yeah. i think he's gonna make that, those adjustments uh with the fly guns i mean pretty decent team pretty decent team but i think max has the bulk i think the detroit luxuries have the bulk as well as the counters and uh interested to see more of of the zygarde as well and then uh age of slash lucario as well so i think max is going to change his entire strategy for this one i'm going to go with the detroit luxuries all right well we agree on that one as well um and for the final matchup of the week we have the miami dragonites versus the atlanta braviary the rematch from the finals of last season um very excited to see this one this is definitely one of the headline matches mm -hmm. of the season this is definitely the headline match of the week mm -hmm. honestly um we have the reigning champ versus the runner-up but honestly like I I matt played really well in week one but man i mean Guanaco just controlled that match, dude. He just controlled that match, and he he's over prediction. His over predictions were incredible. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be quite the blowout, same as last uh, last year's final. But I think honestly, I, I have to lean towards Miami. Just that that week one performance was so strong. He put in such a great showing, um, and it, like like we talked about his over predictions, his predictions. I guess maybe not over predictions. His predictions were just were just on point the entire match um and he was able to dominate for the most part and keep momentum on his side so i i have to leave with miami on this one they just put in too good of a showing week one for me to not side with them yeah and and, and for me they're the reigning champs they're number one in the power rankings or at least my own personal power rankings until they lose i'm gonna keep picking them to win so i'm going with the miami dragonites in this one <laughs> i think the atlanta Bravey are going to put up a good fight of course a great great battler in matty ice but at the end of the day, it's Guanaco. It's the Miami Dragonites. He's going to have a plan ready to go. So I'm going to go with the Dragonites and uh, Atlanta Braviar. You're going to start 0-2. That's uh, that's not good for the uh, runner-up of Season 1. You're right. You're right. Um, I think he... Did he start... No, I think he started 1-1 one one last season. Um, but, I mean, we saw him recover late in the season. So who knows? This might not be a, as big of a blow as we might think. Um, but that's going to be it for our week two predictions and the week one roundup. Uh, again, an incredible week of just a little bit of everything. We saw timers. We saw stalling. We saw some some minor blowouts. <laughs> we saw, so, saw a lot of everything with this mat, uh, with this week, uh, this week's matches. So I, I'm very excited to get into week two. Um, let's see what's what's going to go down. Uh, I'm i'm more than open to being surprised with a lot of our predictions honestly because there's so many close matchups this week just based off week one performances that uh we definitely i i can i think i speak for timmy as well that this this week's gonna be very interesting um but yeah that's gonna be it for this one please 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 go check out all the coaches links in the description uh go check them all out go watch the matches for week one and get prepared for week two uh that's gonna be this saturday of course so be sure to get ready for all that um i have i if i can speak <laughs> um i am of course joined i've been joined this whole video by our co-host it's really timmy b uh do you have any final words for the people out there my friend i am currently balancing a pen on my nose cool all right, all right. Ah, it fell off <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> his links if you want to see more of that go check out his channel his links will be down below uh, so be sure to go check out his channel all his socials and all that good stuff uh, i've been lonely hermit all my links are down below as well uh be sure to hit that like and subscribe button of course um and yeah get ready for saturday so we'll see you guys then i hope you all have a fantastic day and uh saturday 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 we'll see you guys soon Woo! bye